I've basically just like been around Bitcoin since birth. As a 13 year old, you can have a Bitcoin account because Bitcoin doesn't care how old you are, uh, exactly. but you cannot have a, have a bank account. Do you think you will ever get a bank account? I hope I never have to get one. I never adopted it since I've always been born with it. It was always there. I get pocket money in Bitcoin and I mainly currently use BitRefill because it just works really easy. To be honest, at first I thought it was a normal thing and that everyone accepted Bitcoin. So I didn't really know that it was like not widely accepted until I learned that when I was older. I I've been at public school, I've been at private school, I'm gonna do homeschooling next year. In public school, I'm not really gonna mention that I was on stage because I've been missing out on some school days to go to BTC Prague, for example, and that would not end well. <laughs> the secondary headmaster, she said multiple times to me, you shouldn't be talking about this, okay? This is not for the kids to understand. It's also not good that you're missing out so much school for this because school is way more important. It matters what you're learning in the classroom, where I totally disagree. I prefer learning outside of the classroom and real world experience. So a lot of people always say that it's going to be really hard for the new generations because Bitcoin is a totally foreign concept. But let's be honest, it was really hard to even learn the banking system for a lot of adults now. At Bitcoin conferences, absolutely everyone I've met is completely open minded and absolutely happy to hear your opinion. Even if you don't share an opinion, everyone there is okay. I respect your opinion. If I could do one thing, I'd probably try and get rid of those weird scam apps that use Bitcoin as their like kind of, oh yeah, we want to attract more people, but our whole thing is a scam. So this is why Bitcoin is untrustworthy to a lot of people. For the first time I had Ella on and she was like 20 years old. So at that time she was the youngest person on my podcast. Uh, then I had a few weeks ago, uh, Ben on from, uh, you, you probably know him, Ben, yeah. uh, from Generation, uh, what, what is it called? Gen C? Gen for yeah. Bitcoin for yeah. Gen Z or something like that. Uh, he is, I think, 15 years old. And now you are how old? 13 or 12? 13, yes. 13, 13. yeah. I saw videos from you where you were 12 years old. So I was like, uh, now you should <laughs> should be uh, 13 years old. Uh, first of all, um, how, how did it come to that? And is your generation as it's it's like you 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 are actually living up with with Bitcoin? Like you only live on a Bitcoin, um, not standard, but since Bitcoin is here, you only live with Bitcoin. It's like <laughs> we should call Generation Alpha kind of kind of Generation Satoshi. Um, how how is that uh, all coming together for you? Um, so for me, I've basically just like been around Bitcoin since birth because my dad has always been talking about it, so I heard about it regularly. To be honest, at first I thought it was a normal thing and that everyone accepted Bitcoin. So I didn't really know that it was like not widely accepted until I learned that when I was older. And I mean, I've been using Euro and Bitcoin both. I use Euro when I can't use Bitcoin and I use Bitcoin when I can use it, obviously. Um, and it's just kind of always been around for me. So it's kind of normal. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Uh, can you have a bank account if you're 13 years old? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I can kind of have a bank account, but that's like parent controlled. So it's really not my bank account. It's my parents' bank account. So your yeah, parents just give you an access to the yeah. uh, limited access. So it's, it's, it's funny. Like it's interesting. Uh, it's, it's one use case as a 13 year old, you can have a Bitcoin account because Bitcoin doesn't care how old you are, uh, exactly. but you cannot have a, have a bank account. Do you think you will ever get a bank account? Do, do you think that we might be in a Bitcoin world? I hope I never have to get one, but if it's absolutely necessary, then I obviously will. Yeah, probably. Um, let's get started with the, the one thing that I'm thinking about the most, how we can get as many people as possible into Bitcoin. That's why let's start there. How is uh, you in Generation Alpha, I think it's called? Um, I'm how still Generation Z. I'm the very far end of it, but I'm still Gen Z. <laughs> Wait, you're Gen Z? Yeah. <laughs> we are the same generation. I'm the upper bound. I'm actually like, if I would be two and a half years older, I would be uh, generation uh, millennials. Uh, so we are actually the same generation. Uh, if uh, I was two years younger, I'd be generation alpha. Yeah, so we are, we are, we are the outer bound of, 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 yeah. of, of Gen Z. <laughs> really, really cool. Um, uh, yeah, cool. Um, but, uh, how do, how are your peers, uh, um, as they are still very different peers from, from mine when I'm 25, 26 years old, uh, how are your peers thinking about money, about Bitcoin, uh, and how different is that from, from what, how you are seeing Bitcoin? Um, so most of them obviously don't quite understand the concept of money at like at all yet. But to be honest, I don't really understand the concept of 
fear either. Um, I try and explain them the concept of Bitcoin as much as I can. I've even last this year's BTC Prague, I brought my best friend from public school with me to try and orange pill her, which successfully worked. But most of my peers still see Bitcoin as like a shady advertisement thing because they get weird advertisement from in general, just crypto and then like, oh, yeah, Bitcoin is crypto. So, you know, put it all into one box. So they definitely don't trust it yet, but I've been trying to introduce it to them. Interesting. You even had a, a talk at Bitcoin Progresses, right? Yeah. What, what did you I talk about a, there? I had a presentation about kids and Bitcoin. And I, well, orange pilling kids and stuff like that. And I also had a panel with um, the daughters of Daniel Prince and yeah, Jack Mellers. I saw that. That was at the, the pirate ship, right? Yeah, I think I think it was at the same time where I recorded a podcast actually on 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 that pirate ship. <laughs> really, really cool. Um, how um, I, I think that your 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 talk also was really interesting with, with Bitcoin uh, in, in, in kids. Also, maybe let's give a, a rundown for for the people that didn't saw it uh, or didn't uh, were in Prague. Um, what what kind of points did you touch on, and why was that uh, important for you? Um, so honestly. I don't really memorize presentations as one. I just remember basically what I in general want to talk about. And I've done a lot of presentations by now. I started doing presentations when I was 11, the first time at adopting Bitcoin in El Salvador. And in general, with all of my presentations, it's always been kids in Bitcoin, how to orange pill kids, what it's like as a kid with Bitcoin. And I usually try and explain it from my perspective as a kid, because obviously there's the huge generation and age gap difference where a lot of kids have a way different things of perceiving and viewing things. It's interesting. Uh, what, what is holding them back? And like what, what's with like 12, 13 years old? Like it's, it's, it's interesting for me because I didn't even ask the question, what is money until like, I was like 20 years old, 21 years old. So I'm, I'm fascinated by someone even, uh, slowly beginning to grasp what, what money is and what, what, what Bitcoin is, all those things. Like I'm, I'm highly surprised if someone with like 18 or 19 years old actually gets Bitcoin. A 13 is just an, <laughs> it's a whole different ball game. Uh, I love it a lot. Um, but, uh, but how do you achieve someone at that age to, 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 to understand what Bitcoin might be in the future? You, for you, it was normal because your dad used it, right? Exactly. Um, I usually try and explain it to kids by basically explaining it with their surroundings. For example, for me, I've always had my dad around it, so it was pretty easy for me. Dad has it, I have it, and it's normal. But with, for example, someone that really likes football, I can say, hey, there's this uh, football game. I completely forgot where it is. I apologize, but there was this Bitcoin uh, football game going on, and I can talk to them about that. Or people that like playing games, I can always show them Satsman, Shamari, and all of those other games. And people that really like reading, I just tell them, here's some Bitcoin books, have fun. I love that a lot. Really cool. It's also interesting uh, that uh, you don't even, like, you, you, you get it, but you also talk about it publicly. I think... Where you're not even also on, on what Bitcoin did, or how yeah, is it called it now? Mr. Obnoxious, like, I forgot how it's it's yeah. now renamed. I think Mr. Obnox Obnoxious or something like yeah. that. Like not na native English. I, I can no hardly <laughs> hardly pronounce it. Um, but but how did it come to to you being actually like a solid speaker with 13 years old? So uh, first, the first time when I wanted to go on stage, that was when I was 11. My dad just said in the car that he was going to this like Bitcoin conference, which is called Adopting Bitcoin. And we both kind of realized at the same time, like, hey, uh, dad, I never adopted Bitcoin. And my dad was like, that is so cool. We got to get you on a stage. Uh, so it happened. We made it happen. And then I've been invited to Bitcoin podcasts to just be on stage again. And ever since then, I've just either gotten more invitations or decided to go to this conference and ask, hey, do you think I could speak here? Because I really love sharing my opinion about it. And I think it's super fun. And I hope that everyone obviously has fun hearing me talk about it too. Wait, at that point, uh, you didn't have adopted Bitcoin. So the topic was how you will adopt Bitcoin? Or... I had adopted it. It's just I never adopted it since I've always been born, born with it. It was always there. Oh. Oh, in, in that way, yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty hilarious, yeah. Because uh, so you are 13 years old, so like the Bitcoin price, 13 years old was uh, was like a, a few <laughs> few dollars at, at that point when you were born. So that's a few cents. A few cents, even wow. Yeah. 
that that's but it was already there that, that that's that's pretty uh pretty cool uh to, to begin with i i love that uh you're coming so 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 early um what what is also um with, with your generation i feel like they're mostly into um not money things as 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 they should be maybe even um how how do you think the the think about other topics as some when i talk with uh, people that are younger than 15 and i have a lot of smaller cousins like i have a lot of a, a big family and i talk with them they're really concerned uh when when we talk about other things the like climate or something like that they're really concerned about those things like oh we're gonna save the world and we're gonna save the climate how do you look at uh those things and uh do you already have like a connection to that uh climate topic with with bitcoin yeah, so I mentioned it last year at BTC Prague that I was actually at a climate like protest in my local like town. Um, and I actually was talking with some of my friends there and we ho held up like some different things. We also held up some Bitcoin things and had really much fun. And last year at BTC Prague, I also mentioned that Bitcoin is actually good for the environment, which a lot of people don't get yet. I'm not an expert environmentalist, so I'm really not the one you should like be talking to, but you can totally like do some research about it. And there's a lot of people that actually like can tell you how it works that Bitcoin reuses the wasted energy and stuff. How did you already, are you using Bitcoin uh, with your family on a daily basis? Do, do you get pocket money in Bitcoin? I, ho I hope so. I, I get pocket money in Bitcoin and I mainly currently use BitRefill because it just w works really easy because I have all my pocket money in like stats and then I can like pay wherever I basically want with BitRefill. But some stores like a local bakery in my like hometown actually does accept Bitcoin too where I can just directly pay with Bitcoin and they serve really good stuff. So <laughs> really nice. Yeah, I also have a small restaurant here that I like to go to uh, in Vienna where the, the guy is a Bitcoiner. He watches the Bitcoin podcast and then there's a Bitcoin flag outside of the restaurant and uh, it's, it's really cool. Um, how does, I never used actually BitRefill. I see more and more about that online. How does it work? Uh, do you uh, get your Bitcoin there and then you get some... Um so I'm not really great at trying to explain, but I can try. Um, basically, I have my sats and I open BitRefill and they have a bunch of like different um, like uh, vouchers, basically. So let's say it has a voucher for clothing store. Um, I click on the voucher for the clothing store. I say I want to spend 20 euro in this clothing store. They then give me a voucher, which is worth 20 euro and charge me this and this amount of sats. Then I basically just press Wall of Satoshi to give them the stats because I mainly use Wallet of Satoshi. Um, and then I have this voucher that I can just like show and it basically just is like a normal voucher that you can buy in a store and receive. So, Oh, so works. you can just uh, yeah. buy gift cards with that. Basically That's really, cards. Yeah. The, the, the only problem with that is probably like when, when you buy something for like 18 euros and you have a 20 yeah. euros voucher. <laughs> so you have a lot of vouchers for, for a lot of things then. Um, how do you look at uh, school? Um, as, as you're really into school and most people that talk about what the school system is are not in school, which I find hilarious. So I've actually had a wide spectrum of school. I've been at public school. I've been at private school. I'm going to do homeschooling next year. So yeah, um, in private school, Bitcoin was definitely more talked about. Like it was mentioned a few times and uh, some of the teachers actually also mentioned, oh yeah, your classmate Sam was on stage and stuff. Uh, we actually got to watch like a short video of me once, um, which was really cool. But there was also obviously some negative comments from some teachers. For example, the secondary principal in my private school um, said like, oh yeah, Bitcoin, you gotta watch out for that in the future, super shady. Um, versus in public school where I am currently, they just talk, yeah, so it's this thing and we don't really know about it. We should probably stay away for it, from it. And other than that, I just hear small talk like the German teacher by saying, oh, yeah, because I live in Germany. Oh, yeah, there's this Bitcoin thing. I'm not really sure, but I saw an advertisement for yesterday. And in public school, I'm not really going to mention that I was on stage because I've been missing out on some school days to go to BTC Prague, for example. And that would not end well so wait but now you're in private school and you will soon be homeschooled but in public yeah. school uh the, public the, school is where I am right went, now. oh you're now in public school yeah. before you were in private school okay exactly. uh that that uh that, that's fun they, they they would not like that uh, uh really interesting uh, it's also interesting how um how she said that uh, you you gotta watch out for bitcoin in the future i agree but not with the <laughs> sentence afterwards <laughs> like it's a shady stuff it's interesting uh, I talked with Ben about that, that he actually 
um, got uh, kind of mistreated or not mistreated. Like he he uh, uh, teachers kind of talk down to him with authority, like, oh no, Bitcoin is a scam and stuff like that. Uh, without the teachers being really educated about that and, and they just wanted to shut down the, the Bitcoin topic uh, even outside of the, the, the actual uh, class. So uh, did you had like uh, experiences like that where, where the, the teachers also like was like, oh, we, we don't want that yeah. topic here? In the private school, the secondary headmaster uh, woman that said that is super shady and stuff, um, she said multiple times to me that like, yeah, you shouldn't be talking about this. Okay, this is not for the kids to understand. Um, it's also not good that you're missing on out so much school for this because school is way more important. Like it matters what you're learning in the classroom where I totally disagree. I prefer learning outside of the classroom and real world experience. So it's fair to say you're learning more in, in the Bitcoin conferences than in, in the school. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's also a better, uh, better use of it. But yeah, I guess the, the, the Bitcoiners would say you, you, you should be more in Bitcoin conferences and the, the, the teachers and the directors want, want you to be in, in school. That's, that's kind of fair. Yeah, yeah but, that's exactly why I'm switching to homeschooling. Yeah, that's really, why, why did that, uh, why are you switching to the homeschooling? Uh, it's basically, it's just all the teachers not allowing me to go to those Bitcoin conferences and I always have to fake sick to go to them, which is really getting annoying. And it's also a, there's a so-called Schulpflicht in Germany, which basically just means you have to be at school. And if I miss out and they realize that I miss out, I'm going to get into a lot of trouble, probably fines. And I really don't want that. And we just think it'd be a good fresh start for our family just to move to, uh, we're moving to England and do homeschooling there for me and my brother. So my brother can also hopefully come to Bitcoin conferences soon. And by the way, you are from Germany and uh, I've seen some talks as, as, as a preparation uh, and your English is so clear with no accent in it. And it's, it's so perfect uh, that I didn't, don't even, didn't even think about that you might be uh, from Germany or Austria. Like that, that thought I'm, was not even in my head. Uh, I'm bilingual, so I grew up with German and English both being my native langu language. That's why I don't have an accent in English or in German. The only language that I can kind of speak with an accent is Spanish, but it's also very minimal. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's super cool. I, I I love that a lot. I I wanted to ask uh, if if that's from school, but that's then from the parents and not uh, not from the school. English and German, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's fascinating because I had a lot of German guys already on, and their English and also my English is not even close to your English. It's very clear, and you 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 don't hear that you are from from Germany. Uh, that's that's really cool. From everyone knows that I'm Austrian. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they think that I'm uh, sounding like Arnold Schwarzenegger for some reason. I don't hear it. Uh, really cool. Um, what I also want to talk about uh, with, with you uh, is is school in general. Uh, I think, um, of course, when they're not allowing Bitcoin, that's definitely not a good thing. Like they they should allow those topics to to naturally occur, especially if it's not like like if you're not pressing it in in their own. Uh, um, how do you say like in the in the school timetable in the sc schedule yeah. uh, but just as as a topic uh, on the side uh, then i think it should be fine i love that you also got the chance that uh people actually uh, in in the teachers actually watched uh, your your clips uh which is really really cool sign but in general how do you like the education system and and uh, outside of your bitcoin engagements so Private school, I have to say, was a lot better than public school, but I disliked both of the schools. Um, I was at one private school until I was like seven, so I can't really talk about it much since my memory is very limited. Um, but I can say that I had a lot of fun there, but obviously I was only there as a child, so I don't really know how it was talking about Bitcoin because I just talked to my friends about like, oh yeah, Bitcoin exists, but I don't really remember their response because I was so small. Um, then in my next private school over where I live now, I live close to Dresden in Germany. Um, it was accepted by some teachers, not accepted by other teachers. Like I wanted to go to El Salvador for adopting Bitcoin and my Spanish teacher told me, you're not going to learn any Spanish there. Well, El Salvador is a Spanish speaking country, so I don't really understand what you're trying to tell me here. Um, and then here at public school now, it's definitely a lot. I don't like it at all, honestly. <laughs> 
So the public, the private school definitely still gave me like an open mind. I'd say the private school taught me a lot to think for myself, just like my parents did. Um, versus the public school is more like, okay, you have this assignment, finish it in one week and no questions asked. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange and you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your bitbox. And the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual. You have to have the most secure self-custody setup. You have to secure your own devices. You have to protect your privacy. You have to set up an inheritance plan. And depending on where you live, you even want to have a plan B, a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step and if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty and last but not least i have something completely new for you guys i partnered up with coin vigilante this is the most beautiful bitcoin timepiece that i ever saw created by anyone look at that beauty i love it so much coin vigilante made an perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing coin vigilante time pieces those watches are amazing i love them so much it was really hard for me to pick the one that i want to have because there are a lot of great options i went with the new transparency edition they are all limited it. so grab yours those will not be available for a long time but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way i liked it a lot uh, where you got a little bit more freedom but um when when you, you when you then switch to uh, um homeschooling that will be really interesting maybe like a revisit of that interview in like three years or something like that where you had a little bit of homeschooling i think there will be a, a lot of changes at least for with the people that i spoke that uh uh, either were homeschooled or uh, homeschooled their kids. Uh, the the experience is tried uh, quite cool. Like uh, really, it's like a, a hockey stick moment in 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 their life. At least what I saw a little bit like the the moment when people get get Bitcoin. Um, when you think now about uh, a generation that is only living with Bitcoin, like uh, our generation, generation set, or maybe even uh, more extreme generation Alpha. Uh, or maybe even like going uh, uh, 10 years more down the road where like people actually, when they are now like five years old, when once to get to like 15 or 20 years, uh, Bitcoin will be such a huge topic if, if we are successful uh, that they might never use a bank account, that they might never use anything else in Bitcoin. Um, what do you think will that do to society when we are, when a generation uh, grows up in a complete Bitcoin world where like there, there, there is no fiat mindset in there because they never they don't don't even know what what fiat is. Uh, so a lot of people always say that it's going to be really hard for the new generations because Bitcoin is this totally foreign concept. But let's be honest, it was really hard to even learn the banking system for a lot of adults now, and especially harder to then also learn another Bitcoin system because. You grow up with the banking system, you think this is the way it's always been, and then Bitcoin is like a total, a whole new world and path for you. But if you're born into Bitcoin and just, you know, get it from birth, then for me, I have a straight line for this is how the banking system works, this is how the Bitcoin system works. And if you're only born around Bitcoin and you don't even need to know the banking system, you just have a straight line for this is how Bitcoin works and no curves. Oh, yeah, this is how it fits into the banking system. This is how it's different. And yeah, and that's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you think? Is there something that uh, with, with critical thinking, is there something on, on a society level outside of, of, of Bitcoin? Uh, in general, when you compare maybe the, the Bitcoin conference world versus the, the 
a public school world or, and that mindset, uh, when we have a world where uh, the mindset is more like on the Bitcoin conference and less on the on the school side, what do you think uh, is, is, is like the significance of, of that? So I definitely want more people to be like at Bitcoin conferences because at Bitcoin conferences, absolutely everyone I've met is completely open-minded and absolutely happy to hear your opinion. Even if you don't share an opinion, everyone there is okay, I respect your opinion. I'm happy to hear that. Well, not absolutely everyone, obviously, but as many people as possible. Versus in public school, it's a lot of people saying, oh yeah, but our teacher told us to do this. And it's kind of more like a dictatorship from the um, teachers, which totally, of course, isn't nice. And I'd say it also makes the kids have a more closed mind. And since the teachers don't say that Bitcoin is a good thing for you, um, and say sometimes that it's a bad thing for you, they will completely believe that because they don't have an open mind to research about it themselves. It's, it's um, I heard an interesting quote, I cannot remember the exact thing, but it basically was along the lines, like if you allow uh, people to have responsibility, if you allow people to actually make their own decisions, the quality of those decisions we ought, will automatically go up because all of a sudden we have to think about that those decisions. If we kind of constrain humans into uh, a small way of thinking, then it's it's kind of hard for them to even make good decision if they cannot really make decisions. And then yeah. we ha we have those small boxes, uh, and then we say like, oh yeah, like we have to have those small boxes because the other because the people are too stupid f to make their own decisions. But they, they only do stupid because we ha already have those small boxes. And that's why I always like those mind experiments of like, what if we have a world where those boxes are not around, where we are homeschooling kids. Uh, where we actually have critical thinking as a normal way or even like um beyond uh everyone says always like oh we have a critical thinking crisis not like <laughs> i think we have a thinking crisis like people don't yeah. think think about stuff uh, and it's so refreshing to see uh a, a young people like i i call myself also uh, in in the cohort of young people <laughs> even though i'm uh almost twice your age uh but uh no i'm exactly twice your age actually uh but yeah it's it's it, it's fun to see with with uh critical thinking and, and thinking it's it's uh really cool to see that you also uh are already in in that category uh i love it to see uh, really cool um perfect then uh, by the way is your whole family uh, already orange pilled or do you still have some Most some people to go <laughs> most of our family so my father obviously was the beginning of it he discovered bitcoin back in 2010 2010 um he orange pilled my mom which somewhat works my mom definitely understands and like accepts bitcoin but she doesn't use it so much herself um then me and my brother came along who obviously were orange pilled from birth and my brother's three years younger than me so he's generation alpha he's been trying to pass it on to his friends but it's harder the younger they get because the kids that young don't even understand that concept um and my grandparents are orange pilled from both sides i believe father yeah both sides and is your dad uh publicly known uh or is he he wants to be stay anonymous as he since 2010 in bitcoin <laughs> uh he is publicly known but um, I, I think I will outgrow him in numbers one day. I hope that I will be more publicly known than him one day. Yeah, you have to forbid him to, to go on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one, uh, it's, it's the, that's the one uh, comment that got the most when I had Ben on my show. Um, because he mentioned a lot uh, that his, <laughs> it's funny, he as a male uh, mentioned that his mother was really um, the, the orange pillar for him. Uh, and you, your dad, but uh, just observation. Um, and it's interesting how uh, then a lot of comments came like, oh, you have to have the mom or you have to have the mom or so on. And now we'll have the, the mom of, of Ben uh, soon on. So uh, your dad should also be be on the show if he wants to join us, maybe even now. Uh, well, if he wants my dad's to. also a Ben, so second Ben on the podcast or maybe a third. I don't know how many Bens have been on your podcast. A, a lot on <laughs> I think he's the third one. If he wants, he can join us now. Uh, if if he's he ready for it, father. Um, I'm actually in the middle of some work. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, we we we, we do that uh, another time. Really cool. Um, one thing I have um, uh, a question for you as uh, we we kind of dangle around it a little bit, uh, but the question of like what money is, and uh, I I try to ask that in in the podcast episodes as most as I can, 
Um, what is your definition of, of money, especially uh, as you're so, so young already? Um, I'd say money is what we currently use as a symbol of like how much you can afford because we use money as the thing to trade. So for me, money isn't really, it's not as important as it is to some adults. I just see money as this thing that we all have to use because that's the neat, that's what we use to exchange currently stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we need money that much. Like if we would li be living in a world where we could, for example, like just make food come out of thin air and everything else, obviously, I don't see why we would still need money. Do you foresee a future where we, we could be money less? Far future, unfortunately, currently, but possibly. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I had this concept, but if I have a hard time. Uh, maybe I'm too much in my fear at mind, but I have a hard time understanding if, if there's ever a, a time in our lives if there's no money at all. Uh, because even if uh, we are really uh, progressed already, that there's probably always some way of like exchanging uh, value to each other. I mean, if we're so uh, advanced where everything is basically all the basic human needs uh, are met, but still at that point, uh, we might want to keep, I don't know, it's a, it's a hard topic. I have no particular answer for that, but yeah. you probably have. I don't think there's one straight answer for what is money because it can be interpreted in so many different ways and everyone has a totally different opinion about it. Absolutely. I wholeheartedly uh, I agree with you. Um, we have usually uh, end routines in the podcast, um, uh, two different things. Uh, and one thing that I, I want to bring up even now, because it, I think it's, it, it fits well, um, as you're so young, uh, when, when, when you look at Bitcoin from the understandings you have now, is there something that uh, you, you would change about it? If you, like, if you could go back to 2008 or if you could have just an influence over, over Bitcoin and network in general, is, is there something that you like that we should improve? Um, I don't think there's anything to honestly change from my eyes. I think it's going well the way it's going. But if I could do one thing, I'd probably try and get rid of those weird scam apps that use Bitcoin as their like kind of, oh, yeah, we want to attract more people, but our whole thing is a scam. So this is why Bitcoin is untrustworthy to a lot of people. I'd get rid of a lot of those and I'd learn as much as I can about every opinion on Bitcoin so I can try and explain to everyone why I think it's going to be the best money in the whole world. I love that a lot. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a, I, I hope that we can get rid of, of the scam. It's actually a big problem, those scams. Uh, I think especially I talk with a lot of uh, people from Nigeria and, and Africa in general. There it was even worse than it's here. Here there was also a lot of scams, especially in 2017. Uh, a lot of people came into touch with uh, Bitcoin as a pyramid scheme, as, as myself actually also in, in 2017 or 18. Uh, but in Nigeria, it, it was uh, seemingly a really huge, huge topic. Uh, really cool. What can we, uh, as, as one of the endodine is, what can we learn from you outside of Bitcoin, outside of the, the things that we already uh, talked about? What are you uh, otherwise also passionate about? I definitely love for my bunnies. I have three bunnies. Um, I really love caring for them. Um, also, I love doing digital arts. My dad's Twitter profile picture is actually drawn by me. Um, I also love watching anime, especially with my mom and brother, even though they have a completely different anime taste than me. And I also love talking to my friends and just being kind of like the therapist friends to help all my friends out. And then you talk about, uh, about Bitcoin with them. <laughs> a lot of the time, yes. Sometimes I can understand why they get annoyed because sometimes they do say, Sam, I understand you. But can you stop talking about Bitcoin for one second? <laughs> uh, do you think there uh, do you think there will be a bigger topic than than Bitcoin in in your life uh, at some point? Possibly, but possibly not. Currently, I'm um, in German schools in eighth grade. You're already supposed to be looking into what job you want to do in the future and researching. I think I'm probably going to definitely be going into some Bitcoin based job, and I think that this is going to be a huge part of my life and it's definitely good that I'm already starting young talking about it. 
Yeah, absolutely. You should definitely, you should definitely get in into some kind of Bitcoin job in some kind of Bitcoin internship or what, whatever there is. Uh, there's so many uh, interesting companies that uh, probably are all uh, uh, competing for for you to, to work for them. I think you uh, you probably have no uh, no problem there. I think they they will be uh, glad to, to to have you. Uh, what what would you do if if you have the the, the whole choice like uh, in in Bitcoin when you could uh, choose pick and choose whatever you want? So I've always thought that like in general, marketing jobs were really interesting. So I think I'd go into some kind of like marketing job, for example, like logo designing or just like some merch designing. Um, and I definitely still personally talk as much as I can about Bitcoin. I'm not really on the developer side like my father, like my father's really good at that stuff. I don't see myself doing that, but I see myself trying to help as many people as possible see it for what it is instead of just seeing it as this shady unknown thing do you create your your own content currently not i have a twitter account of course but i don't post that much yet um i might be doing it in the future but currently public school is really stressing me out especially with homework so not going to post anything yet but my father and i were thinking about making a youtube account yeah i, I think it, uh, it it would be great Uh, and I mean, you don't have to overdo it. You can just like post one video a week or something like that because yeah. uh, you you still want to have a life also outside of Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably a good idea. Uh, but yeah, I think a, a YouTube channel would be amazing. I, I would love to watch it. Like if you're just like, could be a, a, a leader, a thought leader even in Bitcoin in, in within your generation and, and really um, guide people like what, what to do and how to think about Bitcoin. I think that would be an amazing channel uh and you already have uh, uh, great opinions about that so i think you should definitely uh, do that and i hope uh next time i have you on you you already have your own channel and, and you do the things <laughs> yeah that'd be amazing perfect then uh by the way bunnies um just to be clear you, like real world bunnies like the the actual yeah. like okay. <laughs> one is maxi one is ella and one zoe maxi is brown and fluffy about this big i think then we have ella who's super silky and zoe who's basically still a baby bunny in my eyes she's already grown up but she's the smallest of them all so she's a baby bunny <laughs> how old uh, are those bunnies um my two older bunnies are five and my younger bunny is four three ish uh, okay really cool yeah perfect then uh yeah thank you so much already for Uh, for that, uh, one last interesting question that I have uh, that is coming from the previous guest uh, to, to you. What is your uh, uh, biggest life lesson so far? It's interesting because <laughs> life has been so, so, so short, but what is your biggest life lesson so far? I'm not quite sure if there's one biggest life les lesson because I've had so many life lessons that I I lose track, but... I think the biggest is probably to think for myself. My parents have always raised me. My dad's an anarchist, for example, so they've always raised me to think for myself. And I think that's probably the biggest, happiest life lesson that I've had is to just be myself and not let anyone destroy that. Uh, what, what was that? Uh, anarchist? Uh, My know. dad's an anarchist, yeah. Oh, anarchist. Oh, <laughs> now I now understand it. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I, have uh, a, I have a bit of a funky accent since I used to go to private school, which was an international school. Um, so whenever a Japanese kid, for example, pick, uh, went to my class, I had a little bit of a Japanese English accent and then some Spanish kid joined my class. So I used so I had a random Spanish accent. So it always changes. Now that I'm at public school, some people tell me I sound really British. Some people say I sound really American. Other people say I really sound Australian. I, I'm a mix. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would have. I, I thought you were actually uh, UK because I was like, oh, okay, you had all those. Uh, you were at um, uh, what Bitcoin did the podcast. He's in the UK. Uh, you were at Bitcoin Prague. It's not that far Prague and UK. So I thought like you're probably not American. Uh, so I put you in UK. It's it's uh, re really cool. I, I love that you grew up with with English. I kind of want to. Uh, it's a very unpopular opinion in in Austria, but I I would love for for Austria to have like an English standard because the whole world is speaking English. I don't know yeah. <laughs> why, why we why we need so many languages. It would be nice to have uh, one language uh, as yes. as we have with uh, with with Bitcoin, uh, one language for money, uh, but that that might come also. 
Really cool. Thank you so much. Uh, before I let you go, uh, where can people find you, ask you questions, uh, and potentially find your, your YouTube channel soon? <laughs> Uh, so my YouTube channel, I'm definitely going to be posting on my Twitter account. So follow me on Twitter or now known as X, I guess. Um, you can always message me on Telegram or Signal, which is just Sam the BTC Kid. And on Signal, Sam the BTC Kid taught 21. I mean, what other number would I have? And yeah. <laughs> really cool. Thank you so much, uh, Sam, for being on. It was an honor to speak to you. Uh, I you foresee... I, I foresee a great uh, Bitcoin career. I already love to see uh, in the, like five, six years, maybe your own company, even Bitcoin. Uh, love to see it. Thank you so much for being on. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening uh, uh, for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.